And while all eyes are on Virginia, joining us now to talk about some other races to keep an eye on across the country is Julia Manchester, national reporter for The Hill. Julia, good to see you as always. So as we just talked about, Virginia is seen as this indicator for the midterms and possibly the general, but there are other races to pay attention to as well. I want to start with something that seems on its face random, Buffalo, New York, probably not on a lot of people's radars, but it's interesting because it shows the Democratic Party divide. What are you looking at there? Absolutely. So you have progressive India Walton really looking to oust that incumbent Democratic mayor. And like you said, yes, it il illustrates the Democratic divide in New York and really across the country. Um, India Walton is someone who has been endorsed by a number of national progressives, including uh, New York Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, whereas you have more Buffalo's establishment figures um, endorsing their incumbent mayor. So this very much shows a divide within the party. And I think if the, India Walton ends up winning this race, it's going to be a win, obviously, for progressives. This year for progressives has been relatively tough in a number of races. You know, going back to Virginia, Terry McAuliffe, the establishment candidate in that Democratic Party, beat out the progressive candidate, Jennifer Carroll Foy, in that primary. And then if you go to Ohio's uh, 16th congressional or 11th congressional district, excuse me, you had um, Chantel Brown, for example, uh, established Democratic candidate backed by a number of establishment Democrats beating um, Nina Turner, a former uh, campaign co-chairwoman for Bernie Sanders' campaign. So it's been a bit of a rough year for progressives in some races, but I think they're feeling pretty positive about the Buffalo mayoral race. And also in New York, this is a little bit of a different race, but it's interesting now that Letitia James is now running for Cuomo's seat and also interesting, right, that the criminal charges against him might not go anywhere because there seems to be little to no coordination among law enforcement and prosecutors. Right, absolutely. I mean, this is definitely an interesting time in New York politics. Um, you know, we'll have to see what happens with the charges against former Governor Andrew Cuomo. But I think Letitia James, the attorney general, was able to get a lot of name ID, really, from that investigation into Cuomo earlier this year. Um, she is seen as a major up and coming figure in New York. And I think it definitely diversifies that Democratic part primary, assuming Governor Kathy Hochul runs again for re-election for election in the, uh next year in that race you have two women um running in this primary and it's just shows how far new york has come after the governor the former governor stepped down amid sexual misconduct allegations against women in the workplace never a dull moment in new york uh let's go to ohio now in the 15th congressional district trump won there and republicans are eyeing this race hoping for a comeback in 2022 Yes, absolutely. Trump won in this district. He is very much, I think, banking on this district as well as a number of other Republicans because Ohio is seen as a pretty reliably red state for Republicans. So this, you know, assuming the Republican candidate in this race wins, um, I think it's going to show how much of a stronghold, a uh, grip, really, Republicans have on Ohio. There are two big Senate races, or there's one big Senate race, excuse me, coming up in Ohio later um, next year. Year, which will be very closely watched to replace uh, outgoing Republican Senator Rob Portman. So I think both parties are watching what happens in these off-year elections in the state as potential bellwethers. And quickly, before I let you go, I, I want to get your reaction about what you make of Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger's announcement that he will not seek re-election. Look, I don't think this was su surprising. There was a lot of Democratic redistricting in Illinois, and I think uh, Congressman Kinzinger would have had an uphill battle um, if he were to run for re-election, even though the congressman has very much been in the anti-Trump wing of the Republican Party. He's still a Republican, and Democrats would have worked hard to oust him so they can get another seat in Congress. But I thought what was interesting was President Trump's um, uh, reaction to this, uh, releasing a statement yesterday saying two down, eight to go, obviously about those 10 Republicans in the House who voted to impeach him. Um, I think you're going to see a lot more talk about what happens to the rest of those eight Republicans in the House. We're hearing his, his name a lot more often in, in recent days and weeks. Julia Manchester, thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.